The following video was made because of a request on Patreon. Spoilers ahead! Normally I don't bother with spoiler warnings, but Fight Club is a great film you should really see before you get spoilers for it. So I'm giving you the chance to, if you want to, stop watching this video and go and watch Fight Club and then come back. Which I really do recommend. Click below to watch the original Sins video, or to buy Fight Club. And one final thing before we start, I am currently stuck editing on iMovie, which really, really sucks. Stylized fonts are okay and all, but this is supposed to say the Dust Brothers, when clearly it says the Just Brothers. All of this has got something to do with a girl named Marla Singer. Well, not really, right? I mean, I guess, yeah, something, but not something major. She's basically a f buddy to one guy and a debate opponent to the other. Yeah, hence, something. Also, she does have a fuck of a lot to do with this. Without Marla, there wouldn't have been a fight club. Between those huge, sweating tits that hung enormous, the way you'd think of gods as big. I tend not to think of gods' memories, much less the size. No wonder this movie lost a 10 Things I Hate About You at the 1999 domestic box office. Sure, that's totally the reason. Well, as uh, you know, she, she had her first child last week. Uh, a girl with, with, her, uh, with her new husband. I'm uncertain whether to feel bad for these poor bastards or take their misery as gallows humor. No wonder this movie lost to Anna and the King at the 1999 domestic box office. Yeah, sure, that's the re... Hang on a second, you're doing a bit, aren't you? Well, it's not very... funny? Movie breaks a seven-year streak of me forgetting about Batman Returns. This movie had... I don't know because I've not seen Batman Returns in like eight years. That movie had... I'm assuming an ice cave, but I really don't know. And that's a sin. Check-in for that flight doesn't begin for another two hours, sir. Okay, so what? He can still go through security and wait for the flight, right? No. Well, if he printed out his boarding pass at home, he can. But if he hasn't done that, he can't, because he'll need his boarding pass to proceed, and he gets his boarding pass by checking in. Movie makes itself instantly unavailable for in-flight viewing with fantasy plane crash sequence. Okay, so that's going to lose the movie a little bit of money from airlines not showing it? Do you really want them to compromise the art for the money? I'm guessing not, based on just how much you send Pepsi product placement in this movie. This business card passing is only one of many questions I have about this film's final reveal. The answer to that question is that the business card isn't real. Business cards aren't immune to appearing in delusions. These non-first-class seats have Hollywood levels of legroom. Yeah, they're the emergency exit seats. Okay, so we know by the end of this that Tyler Durden is actually the narrator. So how is he stealing a car and checking on his vibrating luggage at the same time? Now we see him in a taxi coming back to his apartment, so is he actually in the stolen car or in the taxi? If you're capable of having delusions so strong that you imagine a whole other person there when there's not, I don't think it's much of a stretch to beyond that imagine that that imaginary person is stealing a car. It's a topless bar despite there being not one single boob in the entire place. Technically there are boobs in there, they're just under things. Also, I don't think a topless bar with just one single boob in it wouldn't do that well. It's a funny mental image though, just loads of guys going into a place to have a look at the boob. Let me tell you a little bit about Tyler Durden. Unreliable narrator is unreliable. I mean, yeah. So someone has to be there to switch the projectors at the exact moment that one reel ends and the next one begins. There were still theaters that had to change reels back in 1999, but this was not the norm, and the movie explains it like it was a common occurrence. If you look for it, you can see these little dots come into the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And it will ruin movies for you for life, until digital projection arrives. It will ruin movies for you? Why? Because you'll find out they're not real? Also, you punctuated that sin with, until digital projection arrives. But in the previous sin, you complained that it basically already had. So, is this really happening in full view of the customers, or is it even happening at all? No, it's not. Well, at least I don't think it is. This movie is open to interpretation, and that's okay. Again, I ask, if these people are normal people, wouldn't they just walk right up to Ed Norton and ask why he's kicking his own ass? Thereby revealing the secret to him? Instead, the movie has Tyler say hey to the onlookers, and then cuts away as though nothing awkward was said afterwards. Again, if you're delusional enough to think that there's a guy there when there's not, then you're delusional enough not to realize that there's not a guy there when someone says something to you that would suggest there's no one else there. Ham sandwich is 375. The ham sandwich with cheese is 370 something. So, at most, four cents more than the same sandwich without cheese. Maybe it doesn't cost any more and cheese is just an optional extra. Maybe the ham sandwich without cheese is just something else they added because not everyone wants cheese with their ham sandwich. Is this the most inconsequential thing I've ever made a sin for? I was gonna say yes it is and then move on, but now I'm actually thinking about it, I'm thinking that maybe it isn't and that's just... I, I don't even want to think about it. The first rule of Fight Club is... 
You do not talk about Fight Club. Haha, <laughs> what a silly rule. Or, wait, is that the point? It's not a silly rule at all. It's a way to try and get people to not blab about this illegal thing they're doing. Obviously, it's not supposed to be taken completely literally. I mean, Tyler is literally breaking it as he says it by saying it. But trying to stick as close to following the rule as you plausibly can is a pretty good idea. Shatner. I'd say William Shatner. Discount Leonard Nimoy. Discount actual jokes that are funny. This is my house. What are you doing in my house? To keep the illusion going for the audience, Marla helpfully says, you. Instead of, we were f***ing all night long, don't you remember? No one would ever say, we were f***ing all night long, don't you remember, or anything similar to that. Anyone would assume that someone does remember that. So when Norton says, This is my house, what are you doing in my house? If I was Marla, I'd assume that what he meant by that is that he doesn't want her there anymore after they've had sex. To which I'd probably say something along the lines of, you. So yeah, is he really having sex with Marla and imagining himself doing sit-ups on the floor down below? Or is he actually doing sit-ups and imagining Tyler having sex with Marla? This movie is open to multiple interpretations, and that's a sin. So he's the one that turns off the electricity during the rainstorm, and it really goes out. So he's real right now, so... Why is she screaming? If you're delusional enough to imagine a whole other person, you're delusional enough to... Fuck it. You guys have heard me say enough variants on this sin already. From now on, every time that Jeremy sins something that could easily be explained away by delusion, you'll hear this noise, and the sin count will increase. This phone call is another instance of the narrator we see on screen being physically real while Marla is apparently upstairs moaning to a vibrator. She comes over, but only to masturbate upstairs while he washes clothes in the kitchen. Except for their humping, Tyler and Marla were never in the same room. From what I've seen, it appears Tyler and Marla aren't even in the same room during that either. I know we need transition shots, but where is he coming from right now? He doesn't have a job anymore, and we've literally not seen him spend any time away from Tyler on his own, away from this house, since they became friends. So where was he? I don't know. Maybe he was literally anywhere because people leaving the house is not a strange or unusual occurrence. Guys, what would you wish you'd done before you die? Paint a self-portrait. Build a house. How do they know when to talk and when not to talk? How do they know which questions to answer and which ones not to answer? He's clearly talking to himself and answering his own questions. Maybe it's because he addresses them directly. That's just a guess, though. Was I asleep? Had I slept? Well, that was my theory, especially when the movie kept hitting it so strongly, but I'm still at a loss to explain those scenes where you were listening to Tyler f*** Marla, or, I suppose, all the scenes where you literally interact with Tyler. How are you blacked out, but not blacked out at the same time? So, I mean, I kind of give up. That aroma of old sweat like fried chicken. Mmm, old sweat. That's right, Jeremy. Old sweat isn't nice. Well done. But since when is Project Mayhem about murder? The buildings are empty. We're not killing anyone. Yeah, about that. You're about to blow up ten buildings in a huge city with thousands of people driving and walking everywhere. Did you somehow find a way to make sure people weren't doing that? It's almost as if this schizophrenic who's trying to blow up ten buildings hasn't entirely thought everything through. How about that? So, the sin total was 29 sins, and the punishment will be... Delusions. Ah! So now that the main sinning portion of the video is over, let's move on. It's time for a quicker review, where I'm going to review Fight Club, quickly. So, Fight Club, in my opinion, is really, 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 really good. It's definitely a film you should watch more than once, which, if you've seen it, you know that. And if you haven't seen it, why are you still watching? You've gone and fucking ruined it for yourself now, goddammit. The plot twist is one of the best executed and least easily predictable I've ever seen in a movie. Or anywhere come to that. However, if you did happen to have the plot twist spoiled for you, that doesn't mean the movie isn't worth watching. The movie will still be an amazing experience. For me, personally, it's not even the twist that makes this movie so good. It's just seeing all of these fucked up characters bouncing off each other that I enjoy so much. Also the ending. The ending is fucking amazing. And I don't even mean what happens in the ending. I just mean the way that it feels. It feels really climactic and it feels good to watch. It's just so atmospheric and it feels like a great way to round off this whole story. I'm honestly having trouble articulating why I actually like the ending so much. It's not the actual events in it. It's just the end to a great arc told in an incredibly compelling way. If you can put words to what I'm struggling to put words to here, I'd really be interested to see it in the comments. I'm not even saying that to boost my video engagement either. Uh, that's what the teasers are for. Shh. Speaking of which, it's almost time for a teaser. Just after this end segment. That wasn't an amazing segue, was it? <laughs> Welcome to Sinning the Unsinnable. In today's end segment, I'm going to go through the original Sins video, pick out what are, in my opinion, the best argued, most impeccable sins of the lot, and then try to argue against them anyway. 
So, get ready to hear my best arguments against things I don't think can be argued. Although, I'm not going to do too many of them today. Because of reasons. While the rest of us were sleeping, he worked. Here comes the funny point in the movie where Tyler splices a frame of a penis into a family film. But Norton just told us that while the rest of us were sleeping, he worked. So, what family is going to a family film this late in the hour? Right, so, um, hmm. Oh, I've got it. I and most of the people I know at the moment are students. Students generally sleep from 5am to 3pm. Well, maybe not those exact hours, but you know, they sleep in the daytime. And when do people go to see family films? In the daytime. So Tyler works in the daytime when, when, when people are going to see family films. Sound logic. This part has always bothered me. It's a total movie cheat for a cheap laugh. Why the hell would this little girl be crying when she has no idea she's even seen a big cock? First of all, that is a great soundbite to take out of context, so thanks for that. But secondly, this is also something I've always thought when watching this film too, so let's see if I can argue this. Right. Okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. She's not crying because of the penis. Uh, that's completely unrelated. She's crying because the family film she's watching is the Emoji Movie and she just wishes she could die. All right, let's argue one more and then let's move on to a teaser. So someone has to be there to switch the projectors at the exact moment that one reel ends and the next one begins. There were still theaters that had to change reels back in 1999, but this was not the norm. And the movie explains it like it was a common occurrence. Okay. Oh, I'm doing these all in one take, by the way, where I just say the first thing that comes into my mind. So, uh... Yeah, this one's difficult because I don't actually know anything about uh, projection as a topic. Uh, I know how to fix a projector in in uh, like a like, like a, a classroom because they break all the time and people assume I know about technology because I'm a nerd so they ask me to fix it so I know how to fix it because I've got practice but that's that's really all my knowledge on the topic of projection uh so shit you know what I don't actually think I can do this one I think I've been beaten here if ever I think of a retort to this I'll come back to it in the future video but for now well done you have fully bested me. I can't even think of a joke argument against this. Anyway, let's move on to a teaser. It's time for a teaser. See if you can work out what movie I will be basing my Sin Sin video on next week based on these clues. A lot of the characters from this film are returning again in another film soon. It may be for a reboot, it may be for a sequel. It may even be because the movie is based on a true story and the real people from the movie are being portrayed again soon. The second and final clue is that the main character in this film is played by an actor who has appeared famously in a role that has been portrayed by these actors. Was that a confusing sentence? I feel like that was a confusing sentence. Basically, the main guy from this film was in a hit TV show where he played a character that's been played by a few other actors, and these are some of those actors. I'll be interested to see if anyone gets this one, and if anyone works out who the character that these actors have played. Oh, by the way, I have hit some of my Patreon goals, which I'm really, really happy about and I would like to thank you for, but I'm gonna do that next video because I feel like this video is getting a bit long. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.